Sometimes when I'm working in my dictionary, I come to a word where I realize it has another form or shape. For instance, this is a project working on British English, and I know that the word color has a slightly different spelling in American English. Now, they're the same word, they have the same meaning, they're referring to the same thing, they have the same history. It's not like a synonym. In a synonym, the words have similar meaning, but they're, they're different words. So in this case, I would call the color without the U, I would call it a variant. Now, because this particular project is about British English, the one that's different is the one without the U. So that one is the variant, and this word has a variant. Now, how can I add that to this entry? Well, up in the pain bar header, there is this little triangle, and in it there's an option for insert variant. And we can see that there's a tooltip that tells me that I will add a variant to this entry. So that confirms that that's the one that I want to choose. So I will click that, and now I get a dialog box where I can begin to type the word to see if that word exists in the project. And um, it does not. It exists as the gloss of something else, but it does not exist as a head word. If it did exist, I could add that as a variant. But since it doesn't exist, I'm going to create it. Keep in mind that when you click Create, it will create a new entry you're not making a link to something you can see. You're creating a brand new entry out of what is there. And now, in the entry for color with a U, this section for variants has expanded, and it has the word color with, without the U. And in my preview, it tells me that it has a variant color. Now, it gets set up with a variant type of unspecified variant to begin with by default. But normally you would not want to leave that as the variant type. That gets filled in so that there's something there, but normally you wouldn't keep it. So we can click on the ellipsis, and then we can see what our choices are. Now in this case, this is a dialectal variant. Don't forget to untick the box for unspecified variant because you can have more than one of these checked, but normally you would only want one. Now, in this case, it might be a toss-up between is this a spelling variant or a dialectal variant. I would tend to choose the more specific description. Sure, the spelling is different, but the reason the spelling is different is because it's from a different dialect. I would use spelling variant if it was within the same dialect. So now that I've ticked the one that I want, I will click OK. And down here in the variant section, we can see that it now says dialectal variant. In the preview, it does not say that yet, so I will click the refresh button. And after it refreshes, now it tells me that it's a dialectal variant. Now, when there's a reference like this, the target, meaning the word that the reference is talking about, is a live link. So I will click on that link and that will take me to this entry. Now remember, this entry was not there before. So it's important to remember that variants do have their own entry in Flex, but it's a special kind of entry. It's a different kind of entry. Notice that it has this section for variant type and variant of. And so this here tells me that this entry is a variant entry as opposed to a main entry. All the other ones that I just created normally are considered a main entry. Now notice that in this entry there is no section for sense. We're seeing the normal entry level fields and we see the fields that come at the bottom of the entry, but normally in an entry in the middle there's a section called sense with the gloss and definition and all the things related to the meaning. Now the reason it did not get created is because this is a variant entry and because variants are basically the same as the thing that they're a variant of, often they don't need a sense. Now there is a way to add a sense if you want it, and we'll do that a bit later. But that's one of the ways to know that this is a variant entry as opposed to a main entry, is that it's missing the sense information. Now, while I was 
Working on this, I noticed this other entry, courgette, and that got me thinking about it. And in British, courgette correlates with the American zucchini. So I want to look in my dictionary and actually see if the entry for zucchini is already there. And it is, so I will click on zucchini. Now in this case, it's not connected to anything. It has a sense. There's no links, and so this is a main entry. Now, I want to link it to courgette, and I want this one to be the variant because this dictionary is mainly about British English, so zucchini is the, the subsidiary one, the one I'm pointing at, the extra one. So there's two ways that I could do it. I could either be in the entry for courgette and point at this one, or I can be in this one and say that this one is a variant. Now, when I change it to a variant, it will keep its sense information, and we'll talk about that a bit more. So if I want to turn this into a variant, I can go back to the triangle in the pain bar header, and this time I want to choose the option that says this lexeme form is a variant. The tooltip tells me this is related to another form and if I click this, it will add the fields for me to specify the related form. So keep in mind the difference between inserting a variant, you would do that if this entry has a variant, or saying that this one is a variant. This one is the subsidiary, not the main one. So I will click Is Variant. And notice, now it gets this section at the entry level for the variant type and variant of. Now for variant type, again, I will say that it's a dialectal variant, and don't forget to untick unspecified variant. But so far it's not linked to anything, so I do need to say what it's a variant of. So if I click in that field, then I get the ellipsis. I will click on the ellipsis, and now it gives me a chance to search for that. So I can start typing courgette. And it's there. Now I do need to select it to click on it. Now I don't want to click Create. That would make an entry for COU. That's not what I want. I've selected that. I'm going to click OK. And so now it says I am a variant of courgette. And in the preview, it tells you that as well. It says I'm a dialect variant of courgette. And again, this is a live link, so let's try clicking on that. Let's go look at that. And here it says, I have a dialect variant that is zucchini. Now, another one that I want to look at is this entry for hood. Hood says that it's a dialectal variant of bonnet. Now, let's go look at the entry for bonnet. Again, I clicked on the target of the reference. Now this says it's an engine cover, but notice that there are two senses. There's also a sense that's a hat worn by women. Now, hood does not correlate with that. Hood in American is a kind of a hat, but it's not the same kind of hat that you would refer to with bonnet. So it's not actually technically correct, correct that hood is pointing at this whole entire entry, the whole lexeme. So, I really want it to only point at sense one, not sense two. So let's go back to that entry hood. Now remember, I could click on the target of the reference, but there's another way to get there. When it's in the field here, it's telling me the variant form. If I right click on that, then I get a menu for show entry in lexicon. So let me use that method now to go see that entry. So I'm in Hood, and it says it's a variant of Bonnet, but let me try adding another link or adding that link again. I will click on the ellipsis, and I will start typing Bonnet, and I will click on it. Now, I'm only seeing engine cover. I want to actually see more information about that entry. I can actually configure the columns in this dialog. I, can sh uh, I can't show all of the fields, but there's some that I can show. So I will tell it that I want to see definitions. I will make that wider. And maybe I also want to see grammatical info abbreviation. 
And there is a more column choices option, but I'm not going to do that right now. Sometimes when you're searching for words, it helps to know the part of speech. The same word might be a noun or a verb, and you want to distinguish those. So it's helpful that you can add other um, fields to this dialog box. Now notice at the bottom, I get a chance to choose whether this relates to the entry or a specific sense. Now in this case, I do want to point at a specific sense. And once I tick that radio button, now there's a menu here that shows me all of the senses and it's showing me whatever is the primary thing. If there's a definition, it's showing that, otherwise it shows a gloss. And I want to choose the first one. So now that I've chosen the entry and the specific sense, I will click OK. And notice that in the variant of field, it shows me bonnet with a one by it. That means sense one, and it shows me the gloss. So now I'm actually linking to it twice, once for the whole entry and once for a specific sense. And again, up in the preview, it's showing me both. So I don't really want the one that points at the whole entry. So I will select that, and if I hit backspace or delete, it will just delete it. And then this refresh, the, the gray shading showed us that it was in the middle of refreshing. So let's go look at Bonnet now and see what happened to that entry. Notice that in the preview, now the part telling me that it has a dialect variant is inside of Sense 1. It's no longer up at the entry level. And we can also notice that up here at the entry level, there are no fields about the variant information. But if we look down in the Sense, we find this new field called Variants of Sense. And this field tells us that this Sense has a variant that is hood. Now there's a limit to what we can do with this field. We can't do as much as we could with the variant section when it occurs at the entry level. But this is where the link can be made between a sense of one entry and a variant. Now in terms of the links, a link can come from an entire entry or from a sense. But in terms of what can be a variant, it's only a whole entire entry that can be a variant. And if we want to create a link from a variant to a specific sense, we can only initiate that link from the variant itself. We can't initiate it from the sense. So those are some basics about how to create variants in Flex.